Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Jugalia Lost video. Today, it's gonna be a very different type of video, um, because I'm talking about a banner that's currently out now. I'm gonna be talking about the prize showcase, um, specifically saying, looking at it and kind of saying, like, hey, should you summon on this banner? Which is kind of a little bit defeats the purpose now that the banner's already out. But maybe the, if you're on the fence and you maybe need me for all the reason to wonder if you should summon or not, then I guess you can use this video to help you out. But I just kind of wanted to look at it and kind of... Because it's actually a very interesting banner to just drop out of nowhere. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. And if you don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll try and do better. <laughs> But if you do like it, you can leave a like comment uh, about anything in this video. If you actually summoned on this banner, I would be interested to know. Tell me your experience on summoning on this banner if you did it. I'm not summoning on this banner because I have a lot of these units. Um, and subscribe to me if you want more stuff. So first of all, let's go into who are the featured units. It is all old units, but they're all extremely good. Well, some of them are. We have Grace, Shadow Staff, Belina, Shadow Dagger, Valentine's Hildegard, Flame Staff. The, drag the feature dragons are Ramiel, Shadow, and it's... I didn't even see that these two were featured. Holy crap. It's the GNC bunnies. Um, this is also a prize showcase. So basically, if you don't know what a prize showcase is, basically every time you summon, you have a chance of getting some really good prizes. Most of the time, you'll get some real bad stuff, but you also have a chance of getting something like a, um, a specific ingot. That I think it's called Adamantum Ingot. It's one of the ones that you can use on the Agito weapons. Um, so it's super helpful. I'm actually kind of sad that they didn't include free summons with this, but I guess they're all out of free summons because of Persona 5. So let's start with Grace. Let's look at Grace. Here's Grace, everyone's favorite widowed wife that wishes to die. Um, that's her actual story, so don't take that into a weird way. Sorrow's Requiem. If the user's HP is below 40% or max HP, when using this skill, increase the entire team's defense by 30% for 15 seconds. If the user's HP is above or equal to 40% of max HP, reduces their HP to 30% of max HP and grants the entire team a life shield that nullifies damage relative to the number of HP lost by the user when using the skill. This shield can stack with ordinary shields. Earnest Prayer increases the entire team's defense by 100% for 5 seconds. Co-op Ability, 4 Strike, 20%. Chain Co-op Ability, Shadow HP below 40% equals Shield 7. Mournful Heart 2 grants the user a unique 4 Strike that increases 4 Strike damage by 30%. Their 4 Strike dispels one enemy buff from the enemy and restores 10% of the damage inflicted on HP to the user. This recovery caps at 5% of their maximum HP, blindness resistance 100%, and healing double buff uh, 4. So this is Grace. This is, I think, well, beyond a shadow of a doubt. If I were to put like the best healers in the game, number one would be Grace, and then number two, and I would put a big question mark over two, would be Halloween Lowen. Because on some days I feel like Halloween Lowen is better, uh, but he's super a super limited 4 unit that's fire. So not a lot of people are going to have Halloween Lowen. That's just by the nature of how they made Halloween Lowen, not a lot of people are going to have Halloween Lowen. Um, and the difference here is that also Grace can literally fit on any team. Do you have a trouble with an event? Put Grace on the team. Are you not running? Are you fighting like an element that will easily kill her or something? Well, give her some other worm prints that will help negate the ailments or something. Like there's so much that you can do with this unit. It's kind of crazy. Like... The, I think Grace has been best summed up as as um, the unit that makes impossible fights possible at low rank. That because that's really what she does. It's kind of amazing to the point when the Persona Five event came out. She was Persona Five Strikers, excuse me. Persona Five Strikers event came out. Um, Grace was one of the units you could spark with um, uh, Joker and Morgana, and a lot of people said like, "Yo." If you already have Joker and Margana and you have a lot of stuff left over, it might be worth it to actually spark in Grace. And the reason is, is that she is 100% a high demand unit. Um, if there was ever a, a, t a face on the ticket that said, um, hey, Dream Summon, pick whatever unit you want, almost everyone will pick Grace. I personally pick Grace with my Dream Ticket. I paid the 20 something dollars to ensure that I had Grace in a multi-ticket. Um, and I have not regretted it once. 
I think the original video I did on her, it ended up it ends up getting a lot of dislikes, and it's because I was 100% underestimating Grace at the time. I'm like, I think she could do good, but I actually don't know. Maybe she seems to be only fit with Berserker-style units. No, she fits with literally every single time and a kind of unit. So, if you don't have her, and you're a brand new player, hell, if you're even a current player and you don't have her, and you have some stuff left over, it's 100% worth it to kind of go for Grace. That's my immediate thing here. And this is why I also wanted to talk about this banner, because I think it's undeniable that this is a bait. They're baiting towards something big, big coming. That's the only reason that they've released this banner. Um, and it actually kind of scares me, the idea that they were willing to release a unit like Grace featured on such an amazing banner. So let me go quickly to the next unit, because we have Belina. We have Renegade Descent, deal shadow damage to the target and nearby enemies. Damage will be increased the user's HP decreases. As the user's HP decreases, excuse me. If this skill is used during Dragon Drive, a variant called Renegade Dragonfall will be used instead. Renegade Dragonfall deals shadow damage to multiple targets and enemies near those targets and the spells one buff from the each. Damage will be increased as the user's HP decreases. Using this skill will consume 25% of the user's Dragon Drive gauge, but fills 100% of this skill's skill gauge after use. Renegade Gambit fills 40% of the user's dragon, dragon drive gauge. If the user's HP is above 30% or max HP, reduces their HP by 30% of max HP and fills the dragon drive gauge relative to the amount of HP that was lost. If this skill is used during Dragon Drive, a variant called Renegade Shadow Blaze will be used instead. If the user's HP is above 30% of max HP, Renegade Shadow Blaze reduces the HP to 30% of max HP and deals shadow damage to enemies directly ahead. Damage will be increased as the user's HP decreases. Using Renegade Shadow Blaze will consume all of this user's Dragon Drive gauge. Crit rate 10% is her co-op ability. Her chain co-op ability is shadow HP below 40% equals light resistance 10%. And her abilities are Renegade Queen 2, grants the user a Dragon Drive gauge and changes the shapeshift button into a Dragon Drive button. Tapping this button activates our Dragon Drive. Uh, yeah, tapping the, this button will, will activate the Dragon Drive. During Dragon Drive, the user's standard, standard attacks and force strikes will be changed. Damage will be increased to the user's HP decreases. And standard attacks will, and force strikes will fill the user's Dragon Drive gauge. While Dragon Drive is active, the user's skill damage will be increased by 35% and defense will be increased by 75%. Blind Nurse's resistance 100%. HP below 30% equals strength and attack rate up 3 so increased strength by 20% and attack rate by 10% when HP is 30% or below. Whew. She's a shadow dagger. So Belina is another unit that is used in a lot of, I think, high, high tier stuff right now. I know for the, um, the current... I think, is it Legends? Yeah, no, because Master is the thing right below it. Legends Kayan, she's kind of seen as the unit you use to do the fastest with. Um... She does have tiny competition with Joker. So in theory, if you have Joker, you technically don't need Belina, so it's a little bit easier. So if you have Grace, but you don't have Belina and you're a brand new player, you can kind of go like, well, maybe you can get Belina. But having said that, Belina is still really good. And when you're in direct control of her, she, I think, is still better for the Cayenne fight at high tier, of course. As, again, specifically mentioning Joker, uh, no Joker, specifically mentioning it in high tier play at the hardest difficulty of the fight. If anything below that, Cayenne is easy and Joker is perfectly fine the way he is. I use Joker, even though I think I have Belina, but I should really also build up Belina for when I want to actually use her for. I think the main problem with Belina is I think the AI for her sucks, so for auto, it kind of is not worth it. Um, but if you're in control of her, then there's, there's no question here. At least that was always my understanding of the breakdown of Belina, is that the AI for her is extremely terrible, which based off of how much the AI has to kind of deal with, I understand. Uh, those are the two units. And then Valentine's Hildegard, I think some people like, as I mentioned before, the only real four fire flame needs is uh, Halloween Loen, but not a lot of people have Halloween Loen. And I think Valentine's Hildegard is perfectly okay as someone who is not, <laughs> someone who is not Halloween Loen. Um, let me go down here. So we have Ramiel. I think his main thing is that he has if the user is attuned to shadow, increase strength by 60% and fill 50% of the dragon gauge at the start of quests. Um, 
I know he's used with some people, but some others he's not. I'm actually kind of surprised that they don't put the GameCube bunnies on here. One moment, let me go find their info. Okay, and finally, here's the other unit that is apparently featured if I'm reading this correctly. Let me see if I'm reading. Featured Dragons, Gobna and Credney. Gobna and Credney. Um, here's what they do. Their skill are the Dancing Dance Floor. Creates a buff zone that lasts for 10 seconds and gradually fills the skill gauge of adventures inside it by... 9.1% every 0.9 seconds. Their abilities is Water Strength, uh, 45%, and Water Skill Charge. If the user is attuned to water, fill 35% of the, of the skill's skill gauge after using that skill. Um, this bunny is unbelievably broken in a lot of cases. It actually is kind of an issue of how good this stupid bunny is. Um, if you're unaware, they had to actually ban this bunny from being used in Legends content. Because in the beginning when um, the the hardest thing for Volk, which I think is either Legends or Master, I forget, I always forget because I don't really uh, do either of those, but... Or I, I, I very rarely look at it, so they're the same to me in my eyes. Uh, <laughs> it stops at Expert for me. Um, but in the hardest difficulty for Volk, um, you can only really use fire units because they were like, well, obviously, Grace, everyone literally uses Grace. So we're going to literally stop people from using Grace. And they're like, okay, okay, no one can use Grace. Okay. Oops. And now everyone runs the bunny because this, this specific dance floor is so crazy good that it creates a buff zone that it actually allows for a lot of cheese combos that can basically one shot a lot of bosses. <laughs> Or something similar to that. They are just insanely good with what they're doing with this stupid skill. But they had to... It's really funny because they had to kind of dial back and go like, Okay, apparently you guys didn't hear us good enough. We banned, we banned everything so you wouldn't be able to use Grace, but we forgot that you guys had access to the stupid bunny, so now we're banning the bunny. Nobody can use the bunny. Are you happy? And then everyone was like either yes or no, depending on how you felt about the bunnies. But this is an extremely good water dragon to use. I think almost absolutely every, with the few exception of some extreme powerhouse type units that use Gallop Poseidon, almost everyone uses this bunny. Because really, it's hard to kind of knock this, but like they get some strength and their skills charge faster. It's kind of nuts what they're doing. So yeah, this is this banner. Um, it is a bait banner for sure. I don't know what it could potentially mean about what's coming up if they are throwing out these extremely good units. Here's my thought process. Even as a game that is generous, like Dragalia Lost, um, you don't just give out a banner like this without some kind of provocation, right? It means something's coming. We just don't know what. I don't think there's ever going to be a unit that specifically... Rep they will never make another Grace, is what my current... Not like... There might be like a Summer Grace or a Grace variant, but what Grace does for her, for everyone, they'll never make another unit like this. I don't think they'll ever make another unit like this. Um, similar to Melina, I don't think they've ever made another Dragon Drive unit. They've made units that, like, obviously transform, like Tiki and the Persona dudes, where they get something different. But so far, I think they haven't really experimented much with this specific style of changing into a dragon because literally, she just wrecks so many content that it's kind of hard to balance some stuff. Because it's not fair to everyone else who does not have this character to balance a boss specifically to counter one unit. That's kind of bad game design if everyone's like, well, we don't want this one specific unit to kind of ruin everything. So what if we just ban? What if we specifically tailed it, tailed it so hard that like, even if you have them, they wouldn't be useful. Um, which is, I to be fair, I think what they tried to do with the um, water Agito so they could stop Hunter Cerise, but I think it didn't end up mattering and people still used Hunter Cerise. Um, so yeah, I'm, this banner's good. Don't feel bad if you're summoning on it, um, especially if you need any of these units. If you don't need any of these units and you're just like, but what about the prize, um, prize showcase version of it? Don't summon on a prize showcase hoping for the better prizes. That's literally not what it's there for. Um, it's just meant to be a nice little bonus that you get. That's the way I've always seen it. Never specifically pull looking for a better sh prize showcase. Don't feel the need that you have to pull because there's a prize showcase either. Um, only pull if you are missing any of these units because 
they are for sure some of the top, top stuff. So that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. I know it was a little bit weird. It was a little bit different. Um, but it was really just a way for me to know, hey, how's everyone else doing? Because obviously I don't need the summon on this banner. I have literally everyone here but Ramiel, I think. Um, and I don't really need them. So there was, and also I'm still saving until I get around 32k or something. But it is, this is a very mean banner to drop. <laughs> There's been non-stop mean banners in Dragalia. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how I feel about them dropping this without um, at least one free summon. I don't know how I feel like the idea of bringing sh prize showcases and not having there be free summons to go with them. So I don't know, maybe that's why I wanted to specifically talk about this banner. But again, tell me if you pulled or not. Tell me how you did. I'm always interested to hear. And I'll see you guys in the next video. That's the end of today's adventure, everyone. See you later. Bye-bye.